This is a, my my slides from the my ongoing course on the CFD analysis of the external flow over vehicles. And uh, in this video, I'll explain the mosaic meshing in the fluid meshing, and uh, th there's something new in the in the meshing world. So before I go on that topic, I want to give you some basics, and then we will move to the uh, that what is the mosaic meshing and how it is useful. So now we can we can categorize the mesh elements like uh, they can be 2D or maybe they are 3D. But even in 3D mesh elements, you can if you take a look on the surface of the any geometry and uh, display the mesh, you will see those elements. And these elements are either collilateral or triangle. And from the collilateral, we have the chord and tri. And uh, when we join these two elements, we form the 3D elements and these elements commonly used elements for CFD are tetrahedrons, which you can see here and uh, for short it's a tetra. Pyramids, which is very well known figure, you know them from the Egypt. And uh, it has uh, one rectangular or collateral base and uh, joined by the four triangles making a one point on the top. Then we have the hexa elements. These hexa elements are known as hexahedron in the in a full form, but in a short form, in the CFD community they are known as the hexa elements. These elements they have the base and top of rectangular shape or collateral shape, and the sides are rectangles. And uh, then we have the prisms. So prism is uh, like uh, like here in the hexahedron we have the top and bottom. They are rectangular shape. In the case of prisms, we have the top and bottom, they are triangular shape and the sides are rectangular shape. So that's why we call them as a triangular prism. This is also, we can call this as a uh, hexa prism or a rectangular prism. And uh, similarly for the five side, we can call that one as a penta prism. But the only condition is that the side should be of rectangular shape. And this is now a general polyhedra element, which can have the many sides on the and different edges. Okay, so uh, the problem is that if we join the different elements, usually speaking, if I make the tetra mesh or I make the tetra mesh plus the prism or tetra mesh and the hexa elements, the common interface between them, like over here, is going to be the pyramids. And the pyramids, by definition, they are not good for the CFD simulation, number one. Number two is that they are going to create the many, many elements in that region. So it is going to affect your solution. Plus, the number of elements may increase to the very high quantity. So it is affecting your solution in two ways. That its, it's accuracy is lower. So it will slow down your convergence. And with the more elements, you need more resources, RAM, CPU. And also you need more time to solve one iteration on, in, in terms of the, your CPU time. So the solution is that we should be using the sum elements on the transition between the hex elements or prism elements. And then on the other side, maybe these are tetra elements. So the Fluent has a new technology, which is a mosaic technology. It's a, it's not a some meshing type, it's a type of the way how it connects the different meshing. So for example, here we have the these uh, prisms. Now these are the prisms, but it, as you can see, the sides are rectangular. But the, their base and the top shape is not exactly triangular or the rectangular, but they are the multi edges, means they are the polyhedras. So that's why we call them as a polyhedra prisms. And in the core, core side, we have the these hex elements. We call them as a hex core, but the particular name for the, these elements. Otherwise, these are hex elements, hexahedral. So, but the fluent calls them hex core. And now, when you join them, so the fluent is creating the polyhedral elements of the different shapes, not exactly of the same size and same edges, but different to suit the transition between the these polyhedra prisms towards the core elements, which are the hex core. 
So this is this is all about the uh, what is the mosaic technology. So mosaic technology is how to connect the different mesh elements with the polyhedral elements so that the, we can get the reduced mesh count with a higher accuracy and also solution convergence will be very much very much faster. So I can show you the very quickly the, these different meshes over here. So this is a traditional tetrahedral mesh. This is a uh, polyhedral mesh. This is a hexacore. Most mostly this is a hexacore elements. But again, the the this is uh, uh, the base elements. The two uh, D elements they are triangular elements, and then from that side onwards, it makes the prisms, and uh, then it will make the hexacore elements. Uh, in the in the middle where we are going to normally get the tetrahedral element so it will join the 12 elements into one hex core and that's why you can see the less element counts as compared to tetrahedral elements so but you can you might question that the the elements in the tetrahedral mesh they are very low this is the reason is that the we are not able to create the prism layers which are 15 layers on the wings tire and plates and uh, with the my 32 GB system, I was not able to create the prism layers for this mesh. But however, the hex core elements, they have the prism elements around the these geometry elements or objects. So that's why the mesh count is higher. Otherwise, the mesh count would be very, very higher in this case. And the polyhedral elements, uh, this is a completely polyhedral mesh. It contains the 3.7 7, uh, million cells. And the polyhex core, it contains a 3.82 million cells. So majority is like uh, hex elements. And uh, here we have the, for example, here we have the polyhedra prisms. And here we have the these polyhedra elements, simple polyhedra elements you can see over them. You can also maybe see over here as well. So I just want to show you results. And uh, you can see that the tetra with the uh, Number of cells 6.9 million, hex cores 8.08, .08, polyhedral 3.78, polyhex core 3.82. The RAM requirement is 22.1, while the polyhex core has only RAM requirement of 22.4. The number of nodes are very, very high in the case of tetra mesh, and which is very, very low in the case of the polyhex core. And uh, the time per iteration is 35.18 seconds for tetra mesh, 40.299 seconds per iteration for hex core, 28.18 for the polyhedral, 27.337 in the case of the polyhex core. Now, thing is that it is requiring with the same surface mesh with the same refinement regions, it requires the less number of nodes and cells and it takes the less time for per iteration and also mesh requirements are much smaller than the other two mesh types but even with the comparable with the tetra mesh okay so let me show you this thing on the fluent so this is the example of polyhedral mesh and uh, all elements you see on the surfaces they are not triangular triangles but they are the polyhedras and also on the surface but if you take a look on the elements from the inside so i've created two planes first one is on the tire you can see the boundary layer which is nicely done without affecting the quality so right now the orthogonal quality is minimum orthogonal quality is a 0.15 and that is not achievable with some other meshing softwares with this much fine mesh i'm getting the the y plus around uh, less than 10 value but in the case when the when we we are not able to create the prism layers because it is colliding so it does not create the prism layer so at that point maybe we are getting the y plus maybe over the 100 so that is very very small region so now just check the beauty of the mesh here see this these are the prism layers 15 prism layers and then we have the these uh, polyhedral elements and then we have the, these hex core elements and keep in mind these are not disconnected ones these are not the uh, like uh, multi increase in the size but this is the if you take a look in the 3d elements they are connected because the polyhedral elements and these hex core elements 
they may look like these are these are the one to two to one change in the size but that's that that's not the case if you take a look on 3d mesh you understand this these are connected one to one and uh, also you can see one more thing is that we have the more refinement regions as we go, are going outside and then finally we have the big elements and this saves the time and the also resources and we don't need the elements over here because the flow will be ultimately uniform and not affected by the presence of geometry here so we don't require the very fine mesh so it is gradually increasing mesh size without uh, making the any input from the user now if i plot the mesh on the wings same thing in the in the interior but towards the wall or the by boundaries the same thing is happening so see here we have the these uh, polyhedral are the polyprisms and connection between the hex core and the polyprisms is done by the simple polyhedral elements. This is the mosaic meshing. And same is the case over here. Okay, so now you understand that the what's the meaning of the mosaic meshing in the fluid meshing and it's very easy to create in the fluid meshing. If you want any help, you can just send me a message. I'm also running a course on the uh, this topic you can also contact me for the courses and also do subscribe to my channel and uh, share this video like the video and thank you for watching this video